went right back to the stage where I switched the eye off, switch it back on. So we're back to where we were. So I've shown that the paintbrush at 10% opacity is filling in that space just subtly. So now I can start the actual work of doing the tinting. I'm going round, tinting the areas of this boat that I want to look a little bit yellow. I might want to zoom in to see what I'm doing with this better. There we go. Now you won't want every part of it exactly the same. I think the way light works, this horizontal surface at the top, the roof, should be a bit darker than the sides, a bit brighter. So we're going to have it like that. And then we are going to use little bits of yellow in other places around the picture as well. Um, that's working quite nicely for the boat. Things like this little boy fender here and this nasty overexposed white bit at the front. We'll make that a bit of yellow. I think we'll have a bit of yellow rendering on one of the houses, maybe this one here that's a bit white. Just click once there, that's filled in this part, and once over the right hand side. Lovely, and that balances out across the picture. Different levels of intensity of the same colour yellow. Could even put one click of yellow in the sky actually. And find something small to make a brighter colour yellow. Um, maybe this thing, whatever it is. What is it? Yeah, it's a boat in somebody's front garden. Yeah. Is it a boat? Yeah, an upturned boat. So we'll, we'll put some quite bright yellow on that one because it's small might look good at a distance then. Just to pick out the yellow of our yellow boat. So that's fine. And I'll use one or two complementary colours now. Um, the blue. So we'll change the foreground to blue. Again put the opacity right down to 10% because we're only tinting. We're not drawing some cartoon in uh, in graphics and something that's already blue, that garage door, I think we can add a bit of extra blue, that just adds a bit of vibrancy in this boat cover thing here or van, whatever it is. Um, there's another one there. That one. Um, something here little pinpoints of blue here and there. The blue sky? Well, we've put yellow in. What does blue and yellow make? That's okay. Sh any of the houses still too white? Um, yeah. Well, this one up here could do with a bit of blue, couldn't it? Okay, and some red. Bright red, but at ten percent. And uh, well we don't want pink houses. That would be too much for this. Um, we can have a little bit of. Oh, that's interesting. It does the roofs and makes it look like it hangs. Okay, that's okay. These little boat, this boat here with the white cover. I think we can have some. Some quite bright right there. No, it doesn't work. That's horrible. It's just a pink wash, really. Maybe that one. Um. Right, well, you get the idea. 
Um, the mud. The mud shouldn't be grey, should it? It should be brown. So we choose brown. <laughs> here we are. We're overlording nature here, so we don't like the natural colours of things. It's outrageous, isn't it? So we'll just... I don't know if the um, paint bucket tolerance is going to work perfectly on this, but let's just try. Look in the mud. It's just warmed up the colour of the mud slightly, so it's not so grey. Where's my paintbrush gone? Not where it is. Paint pot, I mean. It's selecting bits of the mud, but it's not bleeding onto everything else, and that's. Tinting. I don't really want to do any houses, I don't think. Actually, that's enough. There's always a danger. You can keep on going, keep on going, get carried away, and end up with something that looks like a cartoon or a painting by numbers. Now, you might think I've already done that too much, and that's why I kept the original layer underneath. I can now look at the, the photograph in the state that I've done it, hopefully not got too carried away, and we're still focused on this tints layer. We bring the opacity right down. We're looking at the original, which of course has got the visibility switched off. So we switch that back on. There's the original. I can slide the opacity back up. The tints. There's the tints. There's the original. And maybe what I ideally want is something midway slide it a little bit, just how much of that tinting do I really want and I've got it about 50% 60% yeah I'm happy with it at 60% so that's the version I'll save file save as and I'll call this a uh, Tinted houseboat. Save that on the desktop so I know where it is. And that's my endpoint. So, this has been Andy Roberts in the distributedresearch.net tutorial about bleh, Seashore Image Editor for Mac. And that was the tinting tutorial using the tolerance of the paint bucket tool. Two layers using a low opacity of foreground colour with the paint bucket tool to tint in little areas and then use the opacity of the layer to decide just how much of that tinting I wanted in the final photograph. Hope you found that useful. Signing off. Look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.